Hi, I'm 45-year-old Susan, and this is my past self. Hi, I'm 12-year-old Susan. And this is my future self. Hi, I'm 134-year-old Susan. Our city, Adelaide, is bordered by green hills on the east and miles of coastline on the west. I love our Mediterranean climate, which provides long, hot summers and cold, snowless winters. Being a city planner, I've overseen the economic planning, which has led to strong industries, such as engineering, medical research, and the wine industry. Our transportation infrastructure supports fast, safe, and convenient travels. I was late to school this morning because of a traffic jam. But no more traffic jams in my future. Superhighways feature conventional lanes plus autonomous lanes where cars can travel closely together to form aerodynamic car trains which eliminates traffic congestion. The auto hybrid vehicle can be autonomous, conventional, or a combination. This sweet ride has seats that swing out for personalized access. A fun and healthy way to spend the drive is car exercise. For example, the front seats can convert to rowing machines to take you on an exercising journey, while at the same time generating electricity. I wasn't in much of a hurry to get to school anyway. School is boring. Trust yourself. School's really fun now because of the intergenerational complex for education, where retirement facilities and schools are combined. Each complex has its own specialty. Some include engineering, culinary, computer science, and trade school. Retirees may choose to live in the complex of their expertise, where they share their knowledge while interacting with the younger generations. After the city adopted this program, I enjoyed a lot more interaction with the younger generations. Wellness centers, which are located throughout the city, are enhanced using robo-assistance and intuitive exercise machines. They keep track of vital signs like hydration, heart rate, temperature, and adjust accordingly with fans, mist, and intensity. One time, a fire broke out at our Nana's wellness center, and lots of people got hurt. When a fire broke out in our apartment back in 2050, sensors set off alarms, and we were all warned to evacuate. Smart devices showed us the closest exit, and flame tamer drones cleared a path using pulses of electricity. Autonomous emergency vehicles were already arriving as traffic was automatically diverted. The drones sent information to hospitals to be prepared for those requiring emergency care using the communication system, which includes citywide monitoring and information sharing between services and infrastructure. Emergencies like crimes, accidents, and natural disasters will trigger warnings. Wow, Susans, your infrastructure and city services are incredibly futuristic. But our Nana is having a lot of age-related issues in 2017. We miss Nana. So you know, she's lonely, she can't get around well, and last week she took the wrong dose of medication and had to take a scary trip to the ER. In school, I learned that 10% of deaths were attributed to medication errors. A 75-year Harvard study shows that there is a strong connection between social interaction, physical, and mental health. Our engineers had to use the engineering design process to first define the problems, and then they had to learn the specs to come up with our two solutions, which are the Medicarousel and my personal favorite, my RoboPet, Sparky. My teacher told me that pets help reduce stress, heart rate, loneliness, and people live a lot longer. Robert Waldinger says it best. Good relationships keep us happier and healthier, period. Sparky is incredibly lifelike. He stretches and yawns when he wakes up. He shows excitement when I come home. And he has the best puppy breath ever. <laughs> Plus, he responds to verbal commands. And he's so cute, like, aww. That's amazing. But what if I don't want a dog? You can choose a pet of your liking. They encourage physical activity to maximize your health. They also read your moods and respond with a wag of a tail or a lick on the hand. But wait, there's more. They use sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch to detect body language, mood, breathing rate, and movement. The RoboPets seem awesome, but how does the carousel work? Medicine containers, a motorized robotic pill dispenser, and computers are all elements of the Medicarousel. 
Engineers designed drones to automatically insert the medications. They designed the carousels to rotate and select the medications. Sounds like you have none of the medication problems our Nana has. She has taken the wrong medication, the wrong dose, and even none at all. Plus, she has to rely on others to pick up her prescriptions and fill her pill organizers. I bet engineers had to do a lot of brainstorming to figure this one out. Of course, engineers played a major role. The most important in the design and development of the carousels and robopets was robotic, software, and computer engineers. I bet the robotic engineers made the robopets to do everything a real pet could do, like walking, jumping, fetching, and snuggling. But who programmed the carousels to rotate, operate dispenser doors, and communicate with the pharmacy to verify prescription refills? Software engineers, of course. They also helped make robopets more lifelike and intelligent using AI. This technology took several redesigns and builds to perfect, completing the engineering design process. But with all this technology came risks. Both the MetaCarousel and the RoboPet store personal data that could be hacked or compromised. To reduce this risk, we use military-grade encryption, and any information that is shared uses a virtual private network. There is also risk of carousels and RoboPets malfunctioning, so they use two computer backups. But isn't sophisticated programming and hardware expensive, and doesn't that take a lot of time to design and develop? Of course, those are trade-offs because nobody wants their personal data stolen. Besides, peace of mind is worth more, and anxiety can cause stress-induced illnesses. You know, if our grandma had the Medicare cell, she wouldn't have missed her medication, and if she had the RoboPet, she would be happier, more active, and get important health monitoring. Studies show that if you are happier and healthier, you are more likely to be active, which allows you to be more independent. Ruff, ruff. Sounds like Sparky wants to take a walk. Let's go, Sparky! Ding, ding! But let me take my medicine first. <laughs> Good job. All right, we have a couple questions. So what compromises and trade-offs did you make while designing your age-friendly city? Well, one of the compromises was especially in designing our solutions because, you know, it cost a lot of time, but the result of it was, you know, amazing because you had to work out all the bugs and stuff like that. Um, definitely protecting the um, RoboPet and Carousel from being hacked because it does take a lot of time and resources, but it was definitely worth it in the end because we wanted to keep our citizens safe. I think one of the um, most difficult was the cost of it because normally these robotic pets nowadays they're like two like thousand dollars are really expensive but we decided that it was better for our citizens and that it would be worthwhile to make them and since better. we mass produce them they're cheaper this way and what was the most innovative aspect of your age-friendly city I think the most innovative, in my um, opinion, is our ICE facilities or the Intergenerational Complex for Education because not, it combines both retirement facilities and schools together, so we get to interact with, you know, retired engineers while having fun with these new technologies. Um, I think the most um, innovative part was the pharmacy drones because um, your grandparents will never have to worry about going to the pharmacy, remembering their medication, and your family members don't have to worry about it either. So it just takes all the stress off and you never have to think about it. I think the most innovative part of our city is our RoboPets because you can find these nowadays, but as I said earlier, they're really expensive. And we also advance them with our technologies to make them better for our citizens. What types of food do your citizens eat, and where does the food come from? Well, as I said earlier, our, most of our food comes from the farms that are planted all our hills over in the inner cities, but we plant food like beans, soybeans, which has really high in protein, kale, and carrots, stuff like that. Because of the climate, since we have such a Mediterranean climate here, it's perfect to grow those foods. We also have personal gardens in our um, apartment area so that people can choose what, what they grow and grow their own food. And in our city, we encourage healthy eating to keep our citizens healthy and living a long time. Could you explain how your modular zones can accommodate uh, growth and expansion? 
Well, we decided to set off. Well, the first thing is we have city planners and civil engineers that got together to decide a budget of expansion. So we would, you know, make profit, but we would set aside an amount to, you know, expand our inwards towards the mountains. And when we expand um, so that we don't use a lot of space in our city, we expand up um, and we make taller buildings so that we don't use more land than we need to. Also, for example, with our safety zones, we have inside our wellness, inside our wellness centers um, underground, we have safety zones for our citizens so that we wouldn't take up the rest of the space of our city. Thank you. In your industrial area, what's the primary type of employment you have? Well, we have our engineering, medical research, and the wine industry. So those are our main ones. <laughs> How, how do you ensure um, access for the citizens who are, are aging with mobility issues or with disability? Well, our auto hybrid vehicles, they have, since they have the swing out seats, they are, they are wheelchair accessible and you, they are both a public and a private transportation. So if you're somewhere and you don't have your car and you're in a wheelchair, you can order a special auto hybrid vehicle that is wheelchair accessible. Um, you can take your robopets anywhere throughout the city also because they're robotic um, and they will help you to get into any building that um, has stairs maybe. They'll help you find the handicapped accessible um, entrances. And as you can see here throughout our city, we also have elevated sidewalks and stuff and it has escalators and elevators so any accessibility as like they said wheelchairs would be accessible to those. Could you speak to the issue of sustainability and recycling and how you handle uh, sort of end-of-life issues? The first thing we wanted to do was educate our citizens about cleaning and recycling. So each year we, each year we have a cleaning festival where they come and bring their recyclables and have activities. Um, we also educate our um, young people in our ICE facility. We have um, environmental engineers and civil engineers that come in that are retired and they talk about how, what they did to make um, the city a more sustainable place. Yes, and we also have for our retired citizens, they, they can go to the ICE facilities or all over the city to teach people about how important it is to stay healthy and do, just have a happy life. And, and, al and also our waste conversion center like compost and stuff, so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice work, Alabama.